And as those cryptocurrency prices go up, so unfortunately does the scarcity of graphics cards. But there is a little bit of a solution here, and we've been talking about this earlier this month when I did a video on the best cards to look out for if you don't want to get ripped off as a gamer. And that was in particular the four gigabyte models, the RX 570, and also this one here, the GTX 1050 Ti. Now, there's also the GTX 970, but does that really uh, make for a uh, true four gigabyte card? That is the question. I mean, that's almost seven years, that joke. That's a pretty long running joke. Anyhow, let's see the performance of these two graphics cards right here. And the main reason I'm gonna be focusing on these two cards in particular is I feel like in the next coming months, there may be quite a healthy supply of these out on the used market. And the good news here is, is that as these four gigabyte cards become less useful to cryptocurrency miners, then they're gonna get dumped on the market. And with that excess supply should mean better prices. However, as it stands, these cards right now, they are a little bit overpriced, especially in the United States, where I was looking on eBay and there's people selling them buy it now for as high as $200. And I was thinking to myself, well, that is a bit too much for a 1050 Ti, but RX 570s, for example, and even 470s, you can still get them on AliExpress, but they're pretty much coming in close to their uh, new prices that they were released for years ago. Though, let's get the results out of the way, then we'll talk more about the market situation and what you can do if you are in the market for one of these cards. If you've got this annoying Windows needs activation message and you want to get rid of it for cheap, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered. For as little as 14 bucks after you use the coupon code BFTYC, you can get yourself a legit single end user Windows 10 license today. Links in description below. So running through the benchmarks for you guys, I'll also include the GTX 1060 3 gigabyte. Now the three gigabyte model, that actually came on the market in excess supply over a year ago. And I actually was wondering at the time why these cards were being sold in plenty. But then I realized that Ethereum, pretty much with its DAG file size, had forced the GTX 1063 gigabytes to come onto the market. Now, you will be able to find 1063 gigabytes and do keep your eye out for any card that essentially is a good deal. And you'll know if it's a good deal because you'll see all the other prices up for sale of these cards, and then you'll see it maybe locally going 50% cheaper. And if you can pick that up for that price, then definitely snag it up, but do make sure it works. And one thing I will stress is, uh, before we get into these results, do not fall for these crappy scams on eBay. These cards are not GTX 1050 Ti's, for example. I'm looking on eBay for prices and I'm seeing these uh, knockoff cards that I think they're like 560 Ti's. And the way you can tell is that a 1050 Ti never had a VGA connector built onto the card. And the seller is not showing the inputs and outputs, but you can see it in one of the photos when you're looking at the bottom of the card, you can see that VGA connector there. So basically if you buy one of these cards and it looks like three people on this one listing already have, you've essentially wasted your money. Well, you may be able to get your money back through eBay, but the problem is, is you're just wasting all this time and you have to return the item, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just really going to be complete headache for you though. Speaking of not so much a headache, let's pull up the first title here, F1 2020. This game here saw that the RX 570 does pull ahead of the 1050 Ti and also the 1063 gigabyte quite comfortably. And this is uh, 1080p low settings because I wanna see what you can get out of these cards if you just wanna get into gaming and you just wanna play some titles at 1080p in 2021. Even though F1, they'll probably release F1 2021 soon. It'll probably just be much, pretty much a copy pasta a job of F1 2020, just like 2019 was. Uh, but this game here runs fine on all three cards with the RX 570 and the GTX 1063 gig. You can up the settings a little bit, get a bit of a better visual experience, but for what it's worth, 1% and 0.1% lows were also pretty smooth when I tested those across the three different cards. Now, moving on to Doom Eternal. This game right here, we uh, decided to go 1080p low settings again, and all three cards here were performing uh, very nicely. They were giving out a smooth experience I can play these games at 1080p and get a smooth experience running through with pretty much no stuttering whatsoever. Though onto the next one here, CSGO. If you're into CSGO and you think the updates caused a little bit more strain on your computer and say you've got an old GTX 650 Ti or something, 
then uh, these cards right here, the 1080 Ti and also the RX 570, they do very well. They give very high FPS at 1080p. And the next game we're pulling up here is Fortnite, where the recent update has seen this Mandalorian character uh, come in and of course with Fortnite different updates do different things to the game I'm still having problems with the performance mode. They do say it's in alpha, but at DX12 uh, Competitive settings at 1080p all three of these cards did extremely well now I am throwing in the 3060 Ti in these gaming graphs for you guys uh, Because it's the cheapest newest generation card believe it or not that's out on the market right now so out of the RTX 3000 series and the RX 6000 series, the 3060 Ti is the least expensive for the time being. Nvidia have announced their RTX 3060, but as it stands, if you want to get a new graphics card that's like newer season, then the 3060 Ti is it. And yes, it will give a big boost over all these three other cards here. Though as for the 3060 Ti, we'll talk about that very soon, about the problem that is facing, and it's much worse than these uh, other three cards here in the comparison after we get through Godfall, where we've got here uh, with the RX 570, low settings 1080p, uh, getting around 68 FPS, absolutely fine, really smooth experience. The 1050 Ti was struggling big time here and the 1063 gigabyte did, um, in the in-game benchmark, was doing a, a bit worse than the RX 570. But one thing I did notice here was when I compare the in-game benchmark to just the spot that I was testing on when I did the initial uh, review of my cards last year, uh, people were like, why was Godfall getting better FPS on an RTX 3080 than an RX 6800? That's because I just uh, test a particular point in the map. And what I found when I was testing this point in the map was that the 1050 Ti was getting a, a lot better FPS and the RX 570 was then only beating it by around 50% as opposed to it getting literally like double the FPS in the in-game benchmark. So that's in itself, besides the topic of this video, that's why a lot of reviewers do, uh, when they see results like this that differ greatly from the norm, they then decide to run their own benchmarks at certain parts of the map. And this in-game benchmark, unfortunately, is giving us some really bizarre results. So I'd say, if anything, I'd stick to the actual testing in the game itself versus testing on the in-game benchmark. Anyhow, with all that aside, the conclusion is, with these two cards right here, I'm gonna say if you've got a decent power supply and you want something that's gonna work pretty well, especially for the money, the RX 570 and also the RX 470 are gonna be good cards to get you by if you wanna play games with your friends, especially all the competitive titles like Fortnite and uh, Rainbow Six Siege and Dota 2, all these games that a lot of people play, RX 470, 570 and also 1050 Ti's are gonna do extremely well and just giving you guys a playable experience in these games. And so that'll definitely tide you over until, or hopefully the sooner the better, this whole uh, crypto mining affecting GPU prices blows through the market. But as it stands, it's still right up there at this point in time. So we're gonna be covering it at Tech yes City. It is a big part, of course, when you're building PCs and one component is just exorbitantly priced versus a lot of others that's when you uh, get a report on it and give you guys the best option going forward. And I feel like these cards right here, even though the prices of them are a lot more than they've traditionally been in the past, I feel like the premium you're paying for these cards is not gonna be anywhere near that of say a 3060 Ti, where I'm seeing them go in the United States, for example, for as high as 800 US dollars for a 3060 Ti. They're meant to be around 400 US and they're going for pretty much double. But also when we look at that price point, we're seeing 399 versus 800, where there's a $400 absolute difference, for example. The RX 470 and also the RX 570, before this whole crypto rush came in, in 2020, these were going for around street price. You could pick them up for around 90 to 100 USD. Now, getting them for $150, yes, you're paying a lot more and you're paying 50% more. So the percentage increase isn't as big as the 3060 Ti and the newer cards. But the main thing is the absolute difference, for example, is only $50 more. And I do say only because when we contrast it to those other cards and how much more they cost, the only $50 doesn't seem so bad. Now with these two cards right here, I picked these up locally for 100 Aussie each. So I got lucky. The 1050 Ti picked it up for $100 Aussie, then this RX 570, pick this up for $100 too. So in USD terms, it's around 78 US dollars. So locally, if you can pick up deals and you can check out the cards and make sure they work before you get them, 
you're always gonna get a better deal than you will online. And that's something that I do uh, really encourage here at Tech Yes City. If you can find a good deal, then definitely snap it up. But the best thing is about these two cards in particular going forward is that you could see a lot more of them getting dumped on the market. And once they do get dumped on the market, that could mean cheaper gaming, at least on the entry level point, where I feel like it is the one of the most important things to get that entry level price point right, because it's what a lot of uh, people can afford and that's all their budget send them to. So if I can take care of you guys on this price point, then I definitely will. Another thing about the RX 570s too, is do check out the condition of them. If they've been heavily used for three or four years straight, in the case of the RX 470, then do check that out and make sure that you're not buying a card that's on its last legs. I have seen some RX 470s, for instance, that have suffered greatly from degradation and especially on their GDDR5 memory on the cards themselves to the point where they didn't work properly anymore and they're pretty much useless. I had to bin some of those cards. And the funny thing is this event was over a year ago. So the last thing to address, I know there's gonna be people in the comments that are like, what about the GTX 970? 984 gigabyte and also the R9 294 gigabyte and other cards that are a little bit older with that four gigabytes of VRAM. And the thing is about those cards is I'm actually going to start cycling out parts that are older than five years. And the reason being is because in the last six months, I have seen a lot of parts, not just second hand anymore, a lot of parts that are literally like third or even fourth hand and that they've changed hands that many times and they're just going out in like a month or two months. So I get them in and then I've got a warranty the PCs and I've had a lot of problems in the last few months. I could make a detailed video about it, but going into 2021, I am gonna be changing up my metas and things that I'm looking for on the used market. And it's just with experience and things that I'm seeing personally. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy that video when it comes out. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And if you've got any comments or any suggestions, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. And speaking of questions, we have here the question of the day, which comes from Fernando Procoso. And they ask in the monitor reviews, so one millisecond is a fake. And they're talking about the uh, response times that a lot of manufacturers print on the box. And in this case, it was with an IPS panel that we did a review on, I'll put the link up here. And yes, these response times are just not real world. And in ways, I feel like they're not fake either, like true fake, where what they've done is they've got one particular shade of pixel, and it's usually gray, and then they've measured only that response time from that gray to gray pixel on the monitor. And because it's easier for that monitor and that color shade to transition faster, then that's when they go, yep, we're gonna go with that response time and print it on the box. As opposed to in games, we all know there's so many different colors in games and getting the whole image to transition from the previous color that it was on to the new color or just going from a different color other than that gray that they've picked. You could be seeing uh, on average response times that are around three, four, five milliseconds. And so that's why when I do my tests for response times, I always test just a real world transition, whether it's usually in CSGO, because I find that it's really hard for monitors to get that right in terms of fast transitions. But to answer that question directly, it's not fake, but it is, I feel, heavily misleading. Hope that answers that question, and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.